Ever had that gut feeling that someone you trust might not be as honest as they seem? Brace yourselves, because we're about to dive into some serious intrigue. There's a twist in the tale, a betrayal lurking in the shadows, and we're about to uncover the shocking truth behind why someone close to you might just be spinning a web of lies. Get ready to unravel the mystery as we delve deep into the murky waters of trust and deception. Before proceed, express your faith in God by replying yes. Remember, our lives are shaped by what we receive, but the essence of existence lies in what we give. A modest donation of $40 has the power to provide nourishment for a child for multiple days. Are you prepared? So who is this person? You may already know, but here's what you won't see coming. When truth is replaced by silence, the silence is a lie. Your angel has a message for you, one that carries the weight of truth, and it is going to change your life. Your guardian angel observes that someone you trust is lying to fool you. However, they are unaware that while they may deceive some people some of the time, they cannot deceive everyone all the time. Your angel now senses that this individual is attempting to apologize for their actions. It seems they have realized their mistakes and feel regretful for their behavior. This acknowledgement marks a significant change in their mindset, showing a genuine desire to make amends and mend the relationship. It takes courage and humility to admit wrongdoing and offer an apology, and your angel acknowledges the sincerity behind this effort. By expressing remorse, this person is taking a positive step toward healing and reconciliation, indicating a willingness to repair any harm done and restore harmony in your relationship. This situation presents an opportunity for forgiveness and the chance to move forward with mutual understanding and respect. Your angel encourages you to approach it with an open heart and mind, considering the sincerity of the apology and the potential for reconciliation. Embracing forgiveness can lead to healing and growth for both parties involved, fostering a renewed sense of connection and harmony in your relationship. The individual who deceived you may have initially sought to win your trust, but ended up losing sight of the value of your presence in their life. Now, they recognize the gravity of their mistake and sincerely wish to apologize for their actions. In the past, you were unaware of the deception that unfolded, as they may have manipulated situations to gain your trust and affection. Their motives were not pure, and they engaged in a game that caused you deep hurt. It's natural to experience feelings of hurt, betrayal, and anger upon discovering their true intentions. However, your angel assures you that this person has undergone a change of heart. They now comprehend the seriousness of their actions and the ramifications of losing someone as genuine and rare as you. Your kindness, authenticity, and loving nature have deeply impacted this person's heart leading them to recognize the value of what they once had but have now lost. They now see you as the precious gem that you truly are, understanding that individuals like you are rare in this world. Your genuine heart and caring soul are qualities they deeply regret taking for granted, realizing the pain they caused you. Acknowledging their mistake has stirred a newfound love and respect for you within them prompting them to seek your forgiveness with a sincere heart. While the wounds of the past may still feel raw, it's important to listen to your heart and remain open to the possibility of forgiveness. Forgiveness doesn't mean forgetting or excusing their actions. Rather, it means freeing yourself from the burden of carrying pain and resentment. Take the time you need to process your emotions and consider whether you're ready to accept their apology. By forgiving, you release the negative energy that may have been holding you back and open the door to new possibilities. Your angel wants you to know that you deserve love and respect. You deserve to be treated with kindness and honesty, and anyone who doesn't meet these standards may not be worthy of your time and energy. Setting healthy boundaries and protecting yourself from further harm is essential for your well-being. If you decide to consider accepting this person's apology and reintroducing them into your life, do so cautiously and with discernment. Pay close attention to their actions and intentions, trusting your intuition to guide you. 
While people can change, it's important to remain vigilant for any signs of deception or manipulation. Conversely, if you find that forgiveness isn't feasible at this moment, prioritize your emotional well-being. Your feelings and healing process are important, and it's perfectly acceptable to take the time you need to reach a decision that feels right for you. Remember that you're not alone on this journey. Your angel is beside you, offering guidance and support every step of the way. They understand your heart, your pain, and your strength. You are a unique and beautiful soul, and your presence in the universe is celebrated. You are not defined by the actions of others. Rather, you are defined by the love and light you bring into the world. Embrace your worth and recognize that you deserve genuine love and respect. As you navigate this phase of your life, remember that healing is a gradual process, and it's okay to take things one step at a time. Whether the path leads to reconciliation or inner peace, your journey toward forgiveness is uniquely yours. Throughout the upcoming week, you may feel a strong urge to extend extraordinary efforts on behalf of others. Your innate qualities of generosity, charity, and the art of giving and receiving could become more pronounced during this time. While you might be inclined to provide someone with financial assistance, there's also potential for you to embody a broader form of generosity that goes beyond material aid. This period invites you to engage in acts of kindness that transcend the tangible realm. You may find yourself offering assistance in various ways, such as helping someone during a move, sharing valuable advice, or providing emotional support to a loved one going through a difficult time. It's a reminder that some of the most meaningful gifts are intangible, and your willingness to offer empathy, practical help, or heartfelt guidance can be immensely impactful. Whether you're lending a helping hand or offering words of encouragement, your acts of kindness have the power to create lasting connections and provide solace to those in need. Embracing the true spirit of giving allows you to enrich both yourself and others, fostering a sense of community and support. As you navigate this week of generosity, seize the opportunity to make a positive difference in the lives of those around you. As you extend your hand to uplift others, you become a vital part of the interconnected web of mutual support that weaves through our lives. It's an opportunity to make a profound impact, reminding us that the most valuable gifts often stem from our deepest wells of compassion and understanding. So, as each day unfolds, embrace the call to go above and beyond the ordinary. In doing so, you not only enrich the lives of those around you, but also contribute to the ongoing narrative of human kindness and connection. Your actions serve as a beacon of light in the journey of others, highlighting the profound potential for each of us to make a difference and enhance the human experience. With fervent passion, the Father speaks to you, eager to shower blessings, protection, and advancement upon your life. The day of the Lord, a new dawn, draws near swiftly. Prepare yourself, for in this divine moment, heavenly interventions will converge with your path, marking a time of immense significance and magnitude. Be on guard, for today you are poised to witness the glorious and powerful manifestations of God's presence in the very circumstances that shape your life. Stay vigilant and maintain a steadfast, prayerful posture, for this divine intervention may unfold at any moment enveloping your existence in a transformative embrace. Do not fall into the trap of complacency like the foolish five virgins who slept through their moment of visitation, failing to seize the opportunity before them. Instead, follow the example of the wise five virgins who remained ever prepared, eagerly anticipating their appointed time, whether anticipated or unexpected. My child, grasp this truth. You are swiftly transitioning from mere revelation to tangible manifestation. You stand on the threshold of moving from mere belief to heartfelt reception. A season of resolution for long-standing issues, of turnarounds and restoration, is on the horizon. Prepare your heart to fully embrace the abundant blessings of God, for His divine intervention is on the verge of realization. 
Focus not on what might go wrong, for I am the God that always causes you to triumph, leading you from faith to faith and victory to victory. Can I take a yes as your response? All my promises are confirmed, so trust me as I give you the green light to move forward, even though you may not have all the answers. Your answer isn't a thing or a plan, but a person, my son, who ratified your deliverance on the cross. He's leading you out of suffering into blessing and progress. Even if you make a mistake, I'm the God who turns your errors into success. Even though the road ahead may be unclear, trust that I am guiding you through every challenge and obstacle. While difficulties are inevitable, I specialize in turning rough paths into smooth journeys through the transformative power of my grace. This may surprise those who only expect negativity in your circumstances. Don't look to them or give them thought. Just love them and move on into the destiny and assignment I have for you in my kingdom. It's easy to get caught in the current of negativity, to be pulled under by the what-ifs and the maybes. But I say to you, lift your head. Expect a more than enough release of my grace, surrounding you with hope, dispelling the darkness and raining down the beneficial rains of my spirit that cause your dreams to grow to fruition and your heart's desire to be realized in a radical and miraculous way. This is not to say you should ignore potential troubles. Be prepared, be discerning, and use the wisdom I've granted you. But do not spend your days consumed by anxieties. Trust that I will equip you for the challenges you face. My strength will be your shield. Say in your heart every morning, what else could possibly go right? As you face the day, ask yourself what unexpected blessings might be waiting around the corner. A reconciliation you've longed for? Yes, that and more. An opportunity that arises from a setback. It's happening now, says God. Keep your heart open to the possibilities, the good that may unfold in ways you cannot anticipate. There will be sunshine and rain, joy and sorrow. That is the rhythm of life. But through it all, I am constant. My love for you is unwavering. Let that be your source of comfort. Let it fuel your determination. Go forth with courage. Face the future with confidence. And remember, I am always with you. I am doing a complete work in your past, present, and future. My spirit is actively working in your past, bringing liberty and healing to every broken area of your life from the fractures and abuses of the past. You felt insecure and unsafe even in your skin, and I've seen that says God. I understand the need for emotional security, so be assured that I am concerned and moving with the gentle hand of a shepherd resolving the conflicts stilling the nightmares and threats of the enemy that have touched every aspect of your being your heart, mind, and trust. You are safe, says God in my hands. You are safe and secure. When panic and anxiety threaten to overwhelm you, remind yourself, I am safe. I am secure in the capable hands of my Father. Even when circumstances seem dire and chaotic forces swirl around you, Rest assured that nothing and no one can snatch you away from the loving protection of the divine. Your life is deeply rooted in me, shielded from the uncertainties of the world. Just as the angels blinded those seeking to harm Lot and Sodom, I have veiled the intentions of your adversaries and turned their schemes against themselves. You need not fight them. Instead, you will witness their removal from your life through their own misguided efforts. The Father says time for you to soar, time for you to fly, like a bird in flight, encapsulated in a bubble of my presence, love, peace, and faithfulness. You are ascending in worship that you might descend in warfare, witnessing the enemy's total defeat in every area of your life. People, forgive them. Forgive, release, bless, move on. Even though people may disappoint you at times, you can rest assured that you will not be shaken because your trust is firmly placed in that Christ anointing, my indwelling presence on the inside of you. Be confident and be assured, says the Father. You will rest deeply and live confidently, 
knowing that my embrace and protection encompass every part of your life. This is your season to experience the freedom that comes from finding your identity in me. As you continue your journey, remember the truth of my promises. Doubt your doubts and embrace my sure word that has gone out over you but the prophets. Embrace healing, restoration, and security, knowing you are anchored in my unwavering love. Your past does not define you. It becomes a testimony of the redemptive initiative of grace and power that is flowing down to you from my throne and filling you with those things necessary to reshape your entire existence. Walk confidently and joyfully this day and every day going forward, knowing that your life is hidden in me and that I will never fail you. Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. This is the word of the Lord from James 5, verse 16. So stop doubting. Prayer changes everything. Keep praying until something happens. Now, these words are very comforting, and yet it's easy to forget the sheer weight and power of these words, especially when the storms of life threaten to capsize our little boats. So you may be asking, what does it mean when we say that prayer changes everything? What does it mean when we say, stop doubting and keep praying until something happens? Today, I will talk about this powerful spiritual weapon that can make a big difference in your life. You know, talking to God is like talking to your best friend. It's that comforting voice in your ear, always there to listen, always there to guide you. What we have to remember is that prayer is a two-way street. It's not just about asking for what we want, it's also about listening, opening our hearts, and letting God speak to us. When we truly listen, we start to hear the wonderful things God wants for us. We start to hear the instruction that God gives us concerning our situations. And that's the miracle of prayer. And that's how prayer changes everything. Can you remember the time when Peter, one of Jesus' best friends, was locked up in jail? His friends were really worried and didn't know what to do. So they turned to prayer. They asked God for help. And guess what happened? An angel appeared in Peter's cell and walked him right out of there. This wasn't because his friends had a magic wand. They had something more powerful. They had prayer. And their prayer didn't just change their feelings. It brought about a real big change in the world around them. But that's not all. Even when things don't go exactly as we asked, prayer still has a big impact. It changes us from the inside. It connects us with God. It gives us peace, patience, and strength to face anything. So prayer doesn't always change the situation in the way we sometimes expect, but it always changes us, making us more like Jesus.I in the Bible. In the book of Matthew, in chapter 7, verse 7, it says, Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. This just means that when we talk to God about what we want or need, He hears us. He's ready to help us when we ask Him. The Bible tells us that prayer is powerful. It can do so much good. And in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15, we are told that if we ask anything according to God's will, He listens. Isn't that great news? So when we pray, we're not just talking into thin air. We're having a chat with God, and He's ready and willing to help us. He wants to listen to us and talk with us. That's the amazing power of prayer. Now, when we say prayer changes everything, it's a big statement, isn't it? But it's true. And to understand it better, let's look at some examples. Jabez was a man in the Bible who knew all about how prayer could change everything. You can find his story in the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 4, verses 9 to 10. Now, his mother had named him Jabez because his birth had brought her great pain. But Jabez didn't want to live a life of pain and sorrow. So you know what he did? He prayed to God. He asked God to bless him, to help him, and to keep him from harm so that he would not suffer. And guess what? God answered Jabez's prayer. God gave him what he asked for. This shows how prayer can bring big changes into our lives. Prayer is truly powerful. Now let's look at a story from our own time. There was a man named Nicky Cruz. He used to be a gang leader, and his life was full of violence and crime. But one day, he met a man named David Wilkerson, a preacher who prayed for him. Nicky laughed at him at first, but David didn't give up. He believed in what it says in the book of James, chapter 5, verse 16. 
The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So David kept praying for Nikki. And you know what? Nikki's life completely changed. He left the gang and started helping other people instead. Today, he is the founder of Nikki Cruz Outreach, an evangelistic Christian ministry, and he is also the author of several Christian books. His story shows us that prayer really can change everything, but there's something we need to remember. Sometimes when we pray, it seems like God isn't answering straight away. Does that mean he's not listening? No way. God is always listening. But sometimes he wants us to keep praying, to keep asking. This is what Jesus taught us in the story of a man who went to his friend's house late at night. In the book of Luke, chapter 11, verses 5 to 10, the scripture says, Then Jesus said to them, Suppose you have a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. A friend of mine on a journey has come to me, and I have no food to offer him. And suppose the one inside answers, Don't bother me. The door is already locked, and my children and I are in bed. I can't get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give you the bread because of friendship, yet because of your shameless audacity, he will surely get up and give you as much as you need. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives. The one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks, the door will be opened. Now, you know, sometimes we all have doubts. It's a part of being human. Even the man in the Bible whose son was not well had doubts. His story is in the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 24. He said to Jesus, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. He was honest about his doubt, but he asked Jesus to help him with it. And that's okay. We can ask God to help us when we have doubts, but how can we fight these doubts? How can we make our faith stronger? One big way is through prayer. When we talk to God and listen to Him, it can make our faith stronger. It's just like when we spend time with a good friend. The more time we spend with them, the better we get to know them, and the more we trust them. It's the same with God. The Bible tells us this in the book of Romans, chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. When we hear God's word, when we pray and listen to him, it helps us believe more. And when we believe more, it helps us to have less doubt. But what if we need wisdom to deal with our doubts? The Bible has an answer for that too. In the book of James, chapter 1, verses 5 to 6, it says, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt. So not only can prayer make our faith stronger, but it can also give us wisdom to fight our doubts. Remember, doubt is normal, but don't let it win. Keep praying, keep trusting God, and let His Word make your faith stronger. But it's important to remember that God's wisdom surpasses ours. He sees the bigger picture that we can't see. His ways and thoughts are higher than ours, as the Bible tells us in Isaiah 55, verses 8-9. to when it seems like God isn't answering our prayers, it could be for several reasons. One such reason is that we might be asking amiss or with wrong intentions. In the book of James, chapter 4, verse 3, the Bible talks about asking with wrong motives to fulfill our own selfish desires. When we pray with the intent of self-gratification or for things that do not align with God's will or His plans for us, we may find that these prayers go unanswered. Or maybe the timing isn't right yet. Or perhaps what we are asking for isn't ultimately the best for us. Or it might be that God is using the situation to grow our faith and character. God is our loving Father, and He wants the very best for us. Sometimes, this means He doesn't give us what we want when we want it. But we can always trust in His love and wisdom, knowing that He is working all things together for our good. But the Bible tells us something important about this. In the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3, Verse 11, it says, He has made everything beautiful in its time. This means that God has a perfect time for everything. It may not be our time, but it's always the best time. This is also told in the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 3. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, though it tarries, wait for it. Because it will surely come, it will not tarry. This tells us that even if what we're praying for seems slow in coming, we need to be patient and wait for it. And one more thing. In the book of 2 Peter, 
chapter 3, verse 9, it says, The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God's not slow. He's patient and he wants what's best for us. Now here's another interesting story from the Bible about not giving up in prayer. It's about a man named Jacob. The story is in the book of Genesis, chapter 32, verses 22 to 32. Verses 22. One night, Jacob found himself wrestling with a man until dawn. He didn't give up, even when the man put his hip out of joint. He said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And you know what? The man gave Jacob a new name, Israel, and he blessed him there. Jacob didn't give up. He kept wrestling until he got his blessing. That's a lot like prayer. Sometimes we have to keep praying, keep wrestling with our worries and doubts until we get our blessing. We have to be patient and persistent. And when we do that, just like Jacob, we'll see that prayer can bring blessings and growth in our lives. So keep praying until it happens. Today, we've learned that prayer is like talking and listening to God. It's a way we can ask for help, thank Him for His blessings, and even tell Him about our doubts and fears. And we've seen how powerful it can be for Jabez and the Bible to Nikki Cruz in our own time. We've seen how prayer can really change things, and I'm sure some of us have our own testimonies as well. Thought we've also learned that it's okay to have doubts. Doubting is just a part of being human, but we can't let doubt win. We can pray about our doubts and ask God to help us with them. And we can trust in His Word, which tells us that faith comes from hearing His Word. But perhaps one of the biggest things we've learned is that we need to be patient and keep praying. Like Jacob in the Bible, we need to be persistent. And we need to remember that God's timing is the best timing. The Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, to pray without ceasing. That means we should always be praying, always be talking and listening to God. And in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verses 6 to 7, it says, Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That peace, that sense of calm and well-being that comes from knowing that God is with us, that's what prayer can bring. So I encourage all of us to commit to praying without ceasing. Make prayer a part of your daily routine. Let's be like Jacob, like Jabez, like David Wilkerson who kept praying for Nikki Cruz. Let's keep praying, no matter what, because prayer can change everything. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our faithful and loving God. Father, you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. You are my creator and my counselor, guiding me daily to make wise decisions. Gracious God, you are my comforter in sorrow, pain, and distress. I come before you today with a humble and open heart. I thank you for your grace, I thank you for your love, and for the gift of life. Lord, I am grateful that you're always there for me in the good times and the bad. Lord, I pray for a shift in my life and circumstances. I ask that you will unlock doors of opportunities for me, bring healing to my body, and bring about change in my life. Forgive me, Lord, for the times that I let doubts creep in. Lord, I rebuke every temptation to doubt in the name of Jesus. I pray for faith that moves mountains, for the strength to stop doubting, and to keep praying until it happens in the name of Jesus. I declare victory over fear and doubt. I declare that I will not be moved by what I see or hear, but by the Word of God, which is the truth eternal and unchanging. Lord, I ask for you to guide my thoughts so that they may align with your will. May you touch my heart that it may be full of love, courage, and forgiveness. Lord, May you touch my spirit that I may be filled with your peace. Father, I recognize that I need your guidance every step of the way. Help me to be patient, to wait on your perfect timing. I thank you, Lord, that you will work all things together for my good. I rebuke the spirit of impatience or frustration in the name of Jesus. I declare that I will pray without ceasing. Lord, help me to keep trusting and keep believing. Help me to continue praying until my change comes. For I know that you are a faithful God who never fails. I plead the blood of Jesus over my life and over the lives of my loved ones, that it may be a testament to your glory. May my words and actions reflect your love and grace. 
I rebuke any form of negativity or unkindness in my life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, for the power of prayer, for the privilege of coming to you, for the assurance that you hear me. Thank you for your faithfulness, for your never-ending love and grace. Lord, I pray for a breakthrough, for a turnaround, and for an overflow of your blessings in my life. I know it's not by my power nor by my might, but by your Spirit. I thank you, Lord, for reminding me that I should keep praying until it happens. Lord, I want my prayers to reflect your righteousness. Teach me to pray for things that align with your plans and your purposes. Guide my words and thoughts so that I don't ask out of selfish desires, but in a way that seeks to honor you and further your kingdom. Lord, just as I pray for change in my own life, I pray for change in the lives of my loved ones. As I place them before you, Lord, may they come to know and experience your love and grace in a profound and personal way. Where there is pain or sickness, may you bring healing. Where there is confusion, may you bring clarity. Where there is unrest and instability, may you bring peace. And where there is doubt, may you instill faith. Lord, I rebuke any negative influence and every power of darkness over our lives and our relationships in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the assurance that as I make my request known to you, you are listening. I thank you, Lord, for answering my prayers in the precious name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Have you ever felt the tranquility of early morning when the world is hushed and the day brims with potential? This moment, so serene and pregnant with promise, resembles commencing our day with prayer. Just as the dawn's light begins to blanket the sky, dispelling darkness, initiating our day with God illuminates our path, guiding us through whatever lies ahead. Prioritizing prayer as the first action of our day isn't just about the words we utter. It's about forging a connection with our Creator. It's about offering our time, thoughts, and hearts to Him before anything else. Today, we delve into the significance of making prayer the inaugural act of our day, exploring how this simple yet profound practice can influence the course of our day, impact our mood, and shape our interactions with others. When we start our day with prayer, we declare to God, you are the most important part of my day. This act of prioritizing God sets the tone for everything that follows, affirming our faith and trust in Him. It's a practice that not only strengthens our faith, but also enriches our daily lives, infusing them with peace, joy, and purpose. Commencing each morning with conversation with God is more than just a ritual. It's a lifeline, anchoring our souls in the certainty of His love and promises. It establishes a precedent for the rest of the day, offering a perspective aligned with God's will and brimming with hope. Morning prayer isn't merely a routine. It's an act of faith, believing that God hears us, cares for us, and is actively involved in our lives. It's an expression of our dependence on Him, acknowledging that we need His wisdom and strength to navigate the day. Moreover, starting our day with God empowers us to embody the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. These qualities become more evident in our lives when we spend time with God each morning, enriching our relationships and allowing us to become vessels of His love. Morning prayer equips us with wisdom for the day's decisions, guiding us in both major choices and everyday matters. It sets a rhythm of communion with God that can continue throughout the day, transforming ordinary moments into opportunities to experience His presence and work in our lives. The practice of starting our day with God through prayer is a journey of faith, trust, and surrender. It promises not just a good day, but a God-centered life, rich in peace, purpose, and joy. Let's commit to making prayer the first action of our day, inviting God's presence into every moment and allowing His will to shape our lives. Morning prayer reminds us that true peace is found in the presence of God. Let us, therefore, cherish these early moments with God, allowing His peace to fill us and flow through us. May it be a guiding light throughout our day, a reminder of God's constant presence and unwavering love. In doing so, we not only enrich our own lives, but also extend this peace to those around us, creating ripples of God's love in a world in desperate need of His peace. Embarking on each new day with morning prayer not only immerses us in peace, but also fortifies us with a strength that is not our own. This strength, bestowed upon us by the Almighty, is a testament to the power that lies in beginning our day rooted in divine communion. 
It is a strength that surpasses physical capabilities, nurturing our inner resilience and empowering us to face life's challenges with courage and determination. This divine strength is a promise from God to those who seek Him, as vividly captured in Isaiah 40 verse 31. But those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Morning prayer is our act of waiting on the Lord, of dedicating the first fruits of our day to Him. And in return, He renews our strength, equipping us to soar above the trials and tribulations of life. The strength we gain from starting our day in God's presence goes beyond mere endurance. It transforms our perspective on adversity. Challenges become opportunities to witness God's power at work in our lives. Trials become platforms for His grace to be displayed, and weaknesses become conduits for His strength to be perfected. This strength enables us to persevere with joy, knowing that our victory is secured in Christ. Furthermore, the strength derived from morning prayer infuses our faith with vitality. It anchors us in the truth of God's word and promises, fortifying our trust in Him. In moments of doubt or fear, the remembrance of our morning encounters with God serves as a beacon of hope, reminding us of His faithfulness and the unshakable foundation upon which our lives are built. Also, the strength we receive from morning prayer prepares us for spiritual warfare. Armed with the full armor of God, we can stand against the schemes of the enemy, secure in the knowledge that the battle belongs to the Lord. Our morning prayers act as a declaration of our dependence on God, activating His power and protection over our lives. In essence, the strength gained from our daily communion with God is multifaceted, touching every area of our lives. It is a strength that does not boast in its own might, but in the power of the one who promises to be our refuge and strength and ever-present help in trouble. As we continue to prioritize morning prayer, let us do so with the expectation of being filled anew with God's indomitable strength, ready to face whatever the day may hold with confidence and grace. In the scriptures, we find compelling stories of individuals whose lives were profoundly shaped by their commitment to putting prayer first. These biblical characters offer us timeless examples of how starting the day with God can lead to divine guidance, protection, and empowerment in fulfilling God's purposes. Their stories encourage us to make prayer the first action of our day, trusting that like them, we will experience God's guidance, protection, and empowerment to fulfill our divine calling. As we follow in their footsteps, let us remember that our prayers, whether in times of joy, uncertainty, or distress, are always heard by a God who is intimately involved in the details of our lives. Let us first seek God in prayer, laying the foundation of our journey in His presence. This divine attentiveness assures us of His unwavering support and guidance. It beckons us to approach Him with confidence, knowing that each prayer plants the seeds for miracles yet unseen. Now, to all those within the sound of my voice, let us go to the Lord in prayer. I want you to pray this prayer with me so that you can have all the blessings of this prayer. Let us pray to our gracious and loving God. Heavenly Father, Almighty God, I come before you in awe of your majesty and grace. You are the creator of the heavens and the earth, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Your power is infinite, your wisdom beyond understanding, and your love for us everlasting. You are worthy of all honor, all glory, and all praise. I thank you, Lord, for the gift of life and for your mercies that are new every morning. We are thankful for this new day, a fresh opportunity to experience your love, to walk in your ways, and to reflect your light to those around us. Thank you for your faithfulness and for your unfailing love that surrounds me and my loved ones. Lord, I am grateful for your daily provisions and blessings. In your presence, there is fullness of joy, and at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Merciful Father, I acknowledge my sins before you and ask for your forgiveness. I also choose to forgive those who have trespassed against me, releasing any bitterness or resentment, for you have called us to live in freedom and peace. Lord. I come to you seeking to start each day in your presence, to lay the foundation of my day upon your word and prayer. Help me to seek you first, trusting that all I need will be added unto me, as you have promised. I ask that you would guide my steps, direct my paths, and fill me with your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, I declare that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. I rebuke and bind every plan of the enemy to disrupt my peace, steal my joy, or derail my purpose. In the name of Jesus, I bind every spirit of confusion, fear, 
worry, anxiety, and discouragement. Father, I ask for your protection over me and my loved ones. Shield us from the attacks of the enemy and surround us with your angels. I ask for your healing hand upon us, believing for restoration and strength in our bodies. Lord, bless us in our coming and going, and let your blessings and favor rest upon us as we walk through this day. Let us be vessels of your love and grace to others. As I say this prayer together with everyone listening, I am grateful for every heart that is opening before you right now. We come in agreement as we pray for each other, asking for your Holy Spirit to fill us afresh, to empower us to live lives that glorify you. Guide us, Lord, in your wisdom. Protect us in your strength. Heal us in your mercy and bless us with your abundance. We claim victory over every challenge, declare healing over every illness, and give thanks for your provision and protection. Let your kingdom come and let your will be done on earth and in our lives as it is in heaven. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for hearing and answering my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, for those who are listening and you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I urge you to receive God's grace with an open and repentant heart. Start where you are. Your past doesn't matter. Jesus came to seek and to save those who are lost. God loves you. It is not God's will that anyone should perish, but for all to come to repentance. Say this simple salvation prayer for yourself. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I am a sinner and I ask for your forgiveness. I believe you died for my sins and rose from the dead. I turn from my sins and invite you to come into my heart and life. I want to trust and follow you as my Lord and Savior. Lord Jesus, hear my prayer. I pray. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Now that you have prayed this prayer, you can ask a pastor to baptize you at a local church and make that decision public. Baptism is a symbol of that decision to follow Jesus. Then. I encourage you to have fellowship with other believers, to learn more about your new life, and to get to know more about God. Please feel free to leave your prayer request in the comment section so that we can present them before God for your blessings and victory. Also, we invite other believers on the YouTube platform and all over the world to join us and start praying for you right now. And we want you to know that even if you don't see a reply to your prayer request, it doesn't mean that you were not prayed for. Rest assured that we are actively lifting up each request to God that is in accordance with His will. We believe in the power of prayer to bring comfort, healing, and guidance in accordance with God's perfect plan. To God be all the glory. May the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all.